Hi guys. Okay, so here's another video for you. Um, now this one is a little bit longer than our normal video. We normally try and stay to 20 minutes, uh, maybe 30 minutes. This one is, gosh, it's going to be maybe a, uh, an hour 15, hour 10, hour 15. We're not sure exactly. Some movies aren't that long. Yeah. So, uh, but I wanted to uh, go over a couple things. Uh, first of all, I hope this is really information, uh, good information for you because it's a brand new process of how to transfer uh, inkjet images onto your wood that may save you tons of time. I know I'm kind of excited about doing uh, upcoming projects and you'll see how it works, even though I'm still kind of learning it. The other thing was that there's several places in this video where the image gets kind of blurry. Uh, we're trying to really focus in and zoom in on some of the work, some of the router work. Um, so forgive us for for being a little blurry on a few places. Well, I'm I'm 81 years old. Everything's a little blurry to me. That's why I taught you what I taught you to clear things up. <laughs> so unfortunately, I was in front of the camera, and Dad's eyes were not seeing that we were out of focus. But it's not bad. They're just I wanted to kind of we wanted to throw this on the beginning there, so to kind of prepare you, let you know that there are a few blurry images in there, but. Um, all in all, we didn't feel like we wanted to edit any of it out because it's still all good information. So we're going to, uh, we're going to shut the camera off and get right into it. So, um, thanks for watching and we'll see you at the end. Hey guys. Okay. Here we go again. So this video is going to be specifically on uh, making a sign that I got a request for. Had a customer that wants wanted a special, this is for a Christmas gift of course. By the way, Happy Thanksgiving. We forgot to say that on the last video. It was just a day or two ago. Anyway, um, so what this customer wants is she wants this image carved in a board and then some lettering down underneath it. You guys are going to watch me not real time, but basically step by step by step how I do this. Now what she wanted was she wants this about 12 inches in diameter. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of go over right now how I would figure out how I go about doing this kind of, this kind of deal. This is going to be really fun to carve and it's going to be interesting, but it's also going to be really informative for you guys because we, I've got a brand new process that I want to share with you guys. So anyway, how I figure out how to make this 12 inches in diameter. Okay, so what I've done is this was just printed out. She emailed me this. So this is just printed out and I know because I've already figured this out, but it's four and a half inches is four and a half inches from side to side from the outside of here to the outside of there. So I know I want 12 inches all, all around and it's, it's a circle basically. So it's four and a half both ways. So what I do is I say, okay, I want my image 12 inches in diameter. So I take 12.0 divided by 4.5, that's how big it is, and that tells me that it needs to be 266% in my copier. I'm going to blow this up to 266%, which will make this 12 inches by 12 inches. So in case you guys didn't know how to do that, and I, you know, I, I know a bunch of you already do, but what I'm going to do is, is whenever I can, I'm going to use my copier that has an enlargement and reduction capabilities and now I know I need to blow this up to 266 percent to make that 12 inch in diameter image that I need. So then from that point I said okay I know she wants some lettering down underneath it so I went ahead and made up a board and I, I factored in the lettering down below and I went ahead and made a board. And one, so, one question son. Yeah. On that uh, on that copy, yes. If they don't have enlarging capabilities on their copier, they can take that to Kinko's and get it 266 percent, and it'll come out. Yes, they can. Okay. Yeah, you I can. Just, any, just wanted any, to point any that place out. You go now. What you guys will see, and since you brought that up, Dad, what you guys will see is. At, at 12 by 12, my 8.5 by 11 copier is not going to get that all on one page. So I'm going to have to splice this thing up and put pieces together. 
and I'll even I'll talk about why I'm going to do that rather than just taking it to Kinkos and or or Staples. There's a specific reason why, and I'm going to go into that in just a few minutes. But thank you for that question. That's a good idea, Dad. Um, so I made up a board, and this one is like like I did on video number 45, uh, where I used the panel board. And then I backed it with a, a backer. In fact, on the last video, I showed you a picture of uh, that skull and crossbones mine shaft, and I did it the same way. This particular piece is actually three quarter inch ply. So um, on a future video, I'm going to show how I did this. Uh, I'm going to actually do it on camera, but it's really simple. It's basically you take two pieces, you put glue all over it, put it together. Put the screws in. Make sure your screws aren't too long. These are like inch and a quarter screws, and my board, my board is inch and a half. So, that good? Yeah. And then turn it around so they can see the screws. So they can oh, see there the you screws. go. Okay. So, uh, right now this is an inch and a half board, but it's it's three quarter inch pine that panel board like on video 45 now on the video 45 i talked about using a half inch backer i've kind of uh adjusted that a little bit i want to go at least five eighths this particular one happened to be three quarter because they didn't have any five eighths so i'd rather go heavier than than uh than go lighter so this is three quarter inch backer on that uh and the reason for the backer the reasons for the backer is to keep it from cupping or warping. Now I know that this is going to stay straight and flat. That three-quarter inch will, will prevent it from cupping or, or uh, warping. And it will prevent these laminations from splitting apart. Because it's, it's all filled with glue and, uh, and those screws. So I know it's going to be nice solid board for a long time. Okay, so now... Uh, we're going to move on to a, the next section, and I'm going to talk about a new way to get your images um, on your board without using carbon paper. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, so here's what we got, guys. I, uh, I actually, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I know some of you, many of you probably already know how to do this. Um, and many of you may have even a better process for doing this than, than what I'm going to do here. But I went on YouTube a while back and I saw this video of how to transfer images from an inkjet printer onto other, other things. And this is the process that I use that I'm going to start to use that I think will help you guys out. So the first things first is because this was sent to me in an email and I don't have it in a program like a Corel or something, what happens is if I try to put this on the board just the way it is, it's going to be backwards. So I need to find a way to invert this. So dad and I were talking about it this morning and I said, I don't have it like in Corel or something like that. And he says, well, why don't you use transparency paper? And that's something that we used to use years and years and years ago. Transparency paper, in case you guys don't know, it looks like this. That's what we use to make uh, for our uh, projectors. Yeah, for a uh, projector. And you guys probably have been in a bowling alley in the old days where they would have score sheets and stuff that they blew up on the wall and they use this type of a paper. It's just called, it's just a transparency that you can run through your printer. So what happens is, and once I tried it, it was like, <clears throat> no, that was pretty cool. So I made a copy. Let me see. Let me see if I can get it right. Yeah, I think that would be right. I made it. Can you see that okay, Dad? You mean you need me to put a background to it? Yeah, that, that's Does that good, help right? Yeah, that's good. Just so like I that. made a copy onto transparency paper, which means that when I make a, uh, a copy of this, then I can flip it either way and I can invert it and make it the way I want. For instance, so you can print that out now on a plain piece of paper if you want to. Yeah, and that's what I did. That's what I'm going to show you. So here's my original image. Then I, I copied it on the, the transparency paper. And then I made, then I flipped it and I made another image. So you can see that one, I'm hoping one is opposite of the other, right, Dad? One of them is back. Yeah, back they're back exactly back. opposite. Yeah. Perfect. So, so now that I have my, my image inverted, now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to run it through my copier again. And I'm, I'm, for my sign here, guys, I'm going to blow this up 266%. But for this particular demonstration, I'm just going to do it this size. Makes it a little bit more simple. You guys will see me do the big one later on. So which uh, image, that's my inverted image right there, right? Yeah, yeah, that's my inverted image. So now, here's the thing. This, <clears throat> this is just label stock, guys. Avery labels, this happens to be the kind of stock that, uh, the labels that we use for the USPS. Um, click and ship. Click and ship labels. So what you can do is, it normally goes easier than this. But any, can, any label stock, any labels, you, you can just, buy Avery labels right. and peel all the labels off and then you have a sheet of label stock. So then you have this and it's, it's, you know, it's what the labels don't stick to. So this is the shiny, shiny, uh, non-skid or non-stick side. So what I've done is I... Non-skid? Non-stick. <laughs> non-stick. Okay. <clears throat> Changed my wording there. So what I've done is I've taken this image and I and this is going to be kind of tough to see, but I've copied it on a piece of that. Hold, hold that real still, and I'll zoom in on it. And it looks really, really faint on here, guys. But what you'll see yeah, is it, it. I can see it. It's pretty faint, but yeah. I can see it, so, and it'll show up on the video. Right, and well, I hope so. What it, what I really hope is that it shows up on the board. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to take this. And I'm going to tape it on my board. And again, this is just a just an example. And you really have to be careful with this stuff, guys. Once you print on it, because it's really smeary, it will smear on you in a heartbeat. So you don't want to touch it with your fingers. Now, take a spoon. I'm hoping you can see that. And what you're going to do is you're just going to rub the back of that image. Gosh, I hope this comes out. When I did it earlier, it came out pretty good. I can already see it transferring onto that board. Now, on the video that I watched, they actually put moisture on the board. Oh, they were doing it on a paper bag, actually. And they actually wet the paper bag. I tried that this morning with the hunk of wood, and it just... It smeared like crazy. I wasn't crazy about it. So then I tried it dry and it worked out a lot better. You haven't tried doing that, what you're doing with a spoon. You haven't tried doing that with a squeegee, have you? No, I have not. Well, let me try that a little bit more. Now, for me, the letters are not that important. Because the lettering, the, the north, south, east, west, all those letters for, for my particular use is not really going to matter because I'm going to cut those out of hardboard with my laser and do them anyway. But this gives you an idea. How's that? Does that Shows show up? up? good, yeah. yeah so looked. as faint as it was on this wax paper, guys, once you start rubbing it on there, and I printed this probably at like an hour ago. If you do it fresh, it probably will, will transfer even better. But that is a cool way that, that I know that you can get images and, and think about all that detail in there. If you were doing it with a carbon, carbon paper and a pencil, I mean, this just beats the heck out yeah, of that. Yeah, it could be a train engine, it could be a, a road, whatever. it could be a bouquet of flowers, yeah, it could whatever. be a, but any it, graphic. Yeah, so it gives you, and then, and this probably will be dry enough that you can you can put your fingers on it within about a half hour. You want to let it set and let it dry. But that's a brand new process, guys, that I wanted to share with you that I think, I, I'm hoping that will save you guys some, some effort and some time. Um, if you can figure out the whole thing and, and invert your images with this transparency film, um, Man, you could do a lot of cool stuff, and it saves tons of time, and you've got better lines than if you were doing it with carbon paper and a pencil, which I've been doing for years, for decades. So um, I wanted to share that with you. So what we're going to do is um, on the next scene, I'm actually going to go into making the sign, and I'm going to take all my... Uh, 
I'm going to take this image and again, like I say, blow it up to 266% because that'll give me my 12 inches and uh, we'll start the process of transferring this onto that board and uh, then you guys will see each step of the way as that board, as that board turns into a sign. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be back with you. Okay, guys. So uh, like I, we did on the last scene, this is my image. And you kind of know how I figured out that I needed this 266%. So what I did was I took this image and I cut the letters off because I'm going to, in the next scene, I'm going to be doing the layout on the letters. And I just, I'm going to do those different than I'm going to do this. I'm just going to do that with my regular ink and how you guys know I lay out my letters. So I, I separated the letters from there. So now I've got this and I know I need it 266%. But I knew that this, this dimension here was going to be wider than an 8.5 by 11 piece, an 8.5, obviously. So what I did was I split this in two. I'm kind of showing you the progression here. I split it right down the center. I took a straight edge and I split it right down the center. Now I know each piece, 266%, and I blew them up, and this is what I came up with. So those are my two pieces. That's what it's going to look like hopefully after it's carved it'll look that good or better so that's my two pieces so now what i'm going to do is now as you guys know i copy this onto my label stock so that's my image really um very fragile and, and will smear really easy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put now put these two pieces these are my two halves. I'm going to put them back together. Now, if you had an image that wasn't bigger than 8.5 by 11, obviously you wouldn't need to split it like this, but this is just the way I did it. And on the, on the uh, transparency thing, if you have your image in a program that you can invert it, then obviously you don't have to do this. This is only in case you don't have that capability and you have uh, you can print it on transparency which allows you to invert it so now if this works out right i am going to tape these two pieces together and i'm going to put this image on this board so i have to be really careful and register this thing at the right spot To make sure that it is uh, it is in the right spot. I was tempted to do this just off camera so you guys wouldn't have to take the time and see me do it. So what I'm going to do, I can't put any tape down there, obviously. Any place there's a mark that you're going to transfer, you don't want tape over it. Right. So here's what I'm going to do. Now I've got I've got it taped to the board there. Gosh darn it. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to happen like that. That's pretty good. So, God darn it. All right, so let's do it this way. I really should have trimmed my pieces up a little bit more. You guys are... And You're going to have to speak up, son. By the way, I'm pretty brand new at this this uh, specific deal, as you can tell. So now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put a piece of tape in the back so that very carefully and hopefully that will uh, allow me yeah, that's, that's set up pretty well. So now you would show them where you mark the yeah, board? Yeah, actually, I forgot that part. I've already determined that here's my mark. That's the top of my, uh, my compass, and that's the bottom of my compass, not with the letters in there, because the letter, my small N will fit up here, and my small S will fit down there, and then, of course, we've got plenty of room with way. So I know that the top of this point will fit here, and the bottom will fit there. It's directly in the center of the board, and, uh, and that it's going to drop down that far. So that's where I'm going to put this thing. I'm going to flip this around because I need to make sure that I get this the right way.
So I can see, I, you guys probably can't see this, but I can see the light through this paper and I know that that point is right on that mark there. I'm going to look one more time just to make sure. Got to move it this way just slightly. Okay, so now, again, I'm kind of new to this whole process, guys. So, uh, oh, man. <laughs> well, we're learning together here. You need me to come in there and hold my finger on uh, on the edge of it so it doesn't move, son? No, that's all right, Dad. I got it. I just had to figure out exactly how to do that. But I think I got it now. Yeah, that's good. All right, I'll throw some tape up here. Tape there. We're filming, babe. So, I'm okay. Just watching. All right. And, uh, my daughter just walked in the <laughs> in the shop, so that's who I was talking to off camera there. He doesn't call random people babe. Okay, so now here's what we're gonna do. If this all works right, we're gonna transfer this thing. Let's see if our spoon spoon job will work for us. Again, guys, since this is maybe I've only done this three or four times, only a couple times on camera, off camera, um, it probably would be a little bit easier to do, but I wanted to see if I could make this happen on camera for you guys so you can kind of see what the process is. And the more I do this, obviously, the better it's going to the better it's going to be. I'm just kind of hoping this image comes out. I can kind of see, you guys can't see, but I can kind of see the, the image transferring already. And I can kind of see some light areas too. So hopefully that... Uh, <laughs> kind of missed some stuff in the center here. I got pretty good on that side, but this side not so much in here in the center. Now once, once you transfer that, how long do you have to leave it set before you're ready to carve it? Actually I'm still kind of I'm still kind of learning that, but I won't carve this. It's about seven o'clock in the evening right now i won't carve this till tomorrow but i would definitely leave it a, an hour or so to make sure that ink kind of dries up and once it dries if you've missed any lines you can then go in just with a pencil yeah you can always uh, a pencil and a straight kinda, edge and make kind of fill line. in what you haven't got right yeah it's not perfect but it's not too bad now hold it right there let me zoom in on it Hold it up just. Uh, you want me to hold it up different, different angle? No, actually, it's uh, it looks good just like that, son. Okay, so then I'll put my letters. I'll put my N up here. You know, my all of my different lettering, which I've already got cut. So that'll be the next scene. We'll come back and we'll lay out the rest. I've got my letters all cut for here. So then we'll uh, get all the layout done. Um, and then the next, uh, the next part after that, we'll get to carving and see how that thing comes out. But I probably will, like Dad suggested, go in here and uh, maybe just darken the stuff that, that isn't quite dark enough. 
darken that up and, and make sure I've got good lines. But again... You can do that with a sharp pencil and a straight edge. Yeah, but again, I will have this in front of me when I'm carving. So I'll know, and, and I've talked about that before, always having the artwork in front of you when you're carving. So you, in case there's any ambiguity there where the lines are supposed to be or where they're not. But not bad. I, I still need some more practice on it, but you get the general idea. So we'll move on to the next part right now. Okay guys, so what you can see here is I've got my middle image, the, the part that I transferred, I've got that covered up because I don't want to get that done, you know, sprayed with my overspray with my ink. So now I'm going to go ahead and spray these letters and then I'll move on to the bottom portion where they want the special lettering. But this, uh, that style, by the way, what was that? That was Lucida, Lucida Calligraphy. Calligraphy is the font that they want. So now, you guys have seen me do this lay out signs many times with letters that are that are really um, small and tend to fly away. This is where it's really critical to use little tiny short bursts. Those small letters are uh, about three quarter inch. The bigger ones are about one inch. That W -type. And you cut those with a laser, right? Yeah, these are laser cut, just like the rest of our layout letters. That S started to fly on me. Woo! I'm going to slow down a little bit here. You can see I've got it, I don't know, what would you say I'm about? Uh, 12, 15 inches. Yeah, maybe 15, 16 inches up above. And all I need is just enough to give me that image. Yeah, now, if they don't have the, uh, the laser cut letters, they could, after everything else is done, after they carved that compass, they could do those letters with uh, carbon paper and a pencil. Sure, you can do it that way, or you can put the, you know, many of our guys on Facebook, put the paper right on there and carve right through the paper. You can do it that way too. This is just gives you another, another avenue of ways to do it. Normally, I would let these letters set a little bit longer guys before I take them off of there but since we're in uh, kind of a time crunch right here I'm gonna go well, they show up good though son yeah I think they're gonna they're gonna be all right so now we'll get all this stuff out of the way and that ink had uh, that the transferred image had dried for a little while and that by the way that was something that I learned on this guys um, the the image that I transferred over on here with a spoon, I had printed those probably three or four hours ago. I think you're going to have better, um, better results, and I'm going to try this in the future soon. If you transfer your image to your board as soon as after you print it as you can, because that ink kind of dried on that wax paper. So now so you want to get everything ready to transfer, then print your uh, then print your print your print your graphic, whatever it is at the end. And yeah. then within uh, within a few minutes, you so, want to be transferring that to the board. So this is what I'm talking about. See, I printed this a few hours ago, and it does kind of smear a little bit. But right after I printed it, it wasn't any. It would you could breathe on it, and it would smear a lot worse than that. So it somewhat dried on this wax paper. Uh, or whatever you, this label stock, it's somewhat dried on there. That's why it didn't transfer as well as it could have. So you guys are kind of learning right along with me. Try and print your image and then get it on the board as soon as you can. But anyway, so there's uh, there's the top part of the compass. Now we've got to do hold, is just- Hold that up now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back off. Okay. Because I'm zoomed in pretty good. I'm upside down, so I'll spin it around. So now I've got just two lines of copy that's going to go down here, and we'll do that on the next scene. Get it all laid out, and then we'll fire up the router tomorrow and get this thing carved. See how it's going to come out. Looks good, though, son. Okay. We'll move on to the next step. All right. Okay, so here is the, the bottom two lines of copy here. This I won't have to be quite as careful as I was with those little tiny ones, because they probably won't fly away too easily but still if you kind of get used to how to use these spray cans and uh, when you've got tiny letters 
doing it in short spurts will really uh, really help you from the getting that fly away thing. Yeah, repeat uh, what you're spraying there too, son. I keep getting questions from from new people uh, about what kind of paint do we use. Marsh uh, spray stencil ink. Marsh stencil ink. We don't use paint. So yeah. anybody watching this video, we don't use paint. We use marsh ink. That's the stuff. So works really, really good. Couple different reasons why, and if you guys watch very many of our videos, you'll know why. But uh, since we're talking anyway, um, paint tends to bleed into the board a lot worse than than ink does, um, and it tends to gum up your sanding belts when you go to sand. So those are the two. Yeah, the paint will soak in because of the of the carriers in the paint. It'll soak into the green, especially on pine. Uh, it's impossible to sand out. Uh, and even if it didn't, if it, you know, if you use it on some other wood like redwood or cedar, uh, which it will work on, uh, it'll gum up your sanding belt. So that looks so, good, son. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what that phrase means to this particular uh, person that ordered it, but I think they ordered it for a Christmas gift, so it has some special meaning to them. So, um, Anyway, so the next scene you'll see is uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, off camera, you guys have seen me do it many times, I'll go ahead and round the corners, get the edge on, get it ready to carve, and then uh, on the next scene we'll fire up the router and uh, get to carving on this thing, see how it works out. We'll see you on the next one. All right, you guys, here we go. So uh, let's get this thing carved. Now, as you noticed from the last scene to this scene, that I've uh, darkened up some of these lines. Some of these lines weren't quite uh, dark enough for me. So I used a Sharpie pen, but I used the real fine point. I don't know, uh, I think you can probably see that, Dad. But um, yeah, I used a real fine point to kind of darken in some of those uh, some of those lines, make sure I can see them good enough when I'm carving. So I've got uh, this whole sign, by the way, I'm going to put some silicone. You guys know I do that on my base, make it, make sure that it's sliding well. Um, this whole sign pretty much is going to be carved with our profile bit. Uh, everything is pretty much fine detail, as you can see. Even the lettering and everything, I think, is going to be pretty much all profile bit. So I'm going to just turn this thing over, set the depth, and get ready to go here. Now you guys again know that the way I set the depth is not by measuring the depth, I measure the width. So I, right now I'm looking down the flat of the of the router base to see how wide a line it's going to carve and I'm, then I'm going to test that and make sure it's it's what I want. I'm testing it there because I know that's all going to be taken out anyway. So I'm going to start from the center and move out. Here. That was a little swirly knot there. 
Some of these lines you can see I'm kind of going to the outside. Some of them I'm going to split them. Like this one, obviously I wouldn't want to be too far on this side or that side. I want to split it coming down the center. trying to decide which part I want to do next. This will be another line that you can see I'm staying to the outside and I'm going to do the same thing here. to talk about while we got some time here and I'm doing what I'm doing here is you guys need to remember we're evolving in our in some of our details and some of the stuff that we do because we started making videos several years ago the stuff we do today may be slightly different than what we did at the beginning. So always look for updates. If you're watching the videos from you know, 2011, 2012, this being 2014, always be watching for the updates of, of specific, uh, specific um, subjects. That's the word I was looking for. Um, because it may be different today than it was two or three years ago. All right, so now let's do this one over here. So what I will try to do whenever we do an update is put in the description of the video that it's an update on an earlier video. I'm going to always try to do that, but sometimes that's kind of, I kind of get busy and I don't do that. So I'm, I'm always going to try to from this point forward. So kind of always be looking in that description below the video to see if it's the video that you're looking at is an update to one that was filmed before. This is where it gets tricky. That center line on that small spoke that's pretty tight. I think what I'm going to do is go the opposite direction so that when I get out to there, I can like lift the edge of the router, try to make that point as sharp as possible.
Man, that's tight. That is some tight stuff right there. Now, what you guys, uh, something else that I wanted to kind of mention is that when I am, and I don't know if you can get this, Dad, but um, when I'm carving, one of the ways I keep, try to keep really good control is you'll notice that my fingers are against this edge of this router base and in connection with the, the board. That helps me keep really, really good control. That's why I really love this base. The more I use it, the more I love it. So I don't know if you can actually get that, Dad. See the way I, I'm putting pressure on these fingers, guys? These handles are only there really to kind of guide it. But what's really keeping it in place is the pressure of this finger against the sign and the router base that helps me keep that exactly where I want it. Just something I kind of learned how to do with this new router base. All right, let me get some lines here. Now I'm sure somebody's gonna ask, how deep is that line? I don't know. <laughs> I know how wide it is, and that's what I did my, that's what I set the, the bit at, is the width of the line. cutting that line away trying to split it rather than carving on one side or the other But that image, actually I can hold it up. I've got that image that I'm glancing at over here off camera. Just in case I have any questions, like I talked about in the previous scene, if I have any questions of what line goes where or how I want it to look.
Okay, guys, that's all I'm going to do on camera. So you guys got to see me do this whole section. I'm going to go ahead and we'll shut the camera off and I'll do the rest of this. Then we'll come on. Now this and these, you can see, those are, I've got those X'd out. Those are all going to be black. Again, like they are like they are on the, the artwork. So, But I'll wait until I go deeper with my bit. But I know those are all going to be blacked out, as is this. This part right here and this part. Ooh. I think my pen went dry on me. Uh-oh. There it comes. So that's all going to be blacked out, obviously, like the like the, um, the image there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this compass off camera. Then we'll come back on and we'll, uh, we'll do the letters, set at some different depths, and uh, we'll see how this thing's going to turn out. Stay tuned. Okay, so we've got all of this fine detail here except I just realized I forgot these dots <laughs> I just realized that as the camera turned on so I'm going what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these dots and then I'm going to take out this stuff that needs to all be cleaned out again matching our image how these are all black so I'll need to take this stuff out um, and then these little pieces here so we'll do that right now Yeah. 
I'm trying to follow you. I gotta turn this one up a little bit. Gotta take these little pieces out.
Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all these uh, these small ones off camera, and then I'll come back on and we'll we'll start in those bigger letters down there. Okay, so I got all of these letters done. So this is all complete now, other than then uh, these pieces that I'll need to take out with my cleanup bit, my 90 degree V-groove. And I'll do that right after I do the lettering here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these three letters on camera so you can see how that's done. And then I'll go and do the rest of them off camera. Then I'll come back and do this, uh, take these little pieces out. And then the carving will be done. Normally I would be doing this the other way, but for a camera angle, I'm doing it this way, to, you guys can see a little bit better. If I can just figure out how to hold the camera still. Well, if I can hold the router still, you should be able to hold the camera still. Yeah, well, you'd think so. letters I wouldn't be using the profile bit I would be using a 60 degree or regular 60 degree V group however these letters are such a narrow stroke that I decided to use a profile bit on them So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these letters off camera, guys. Come back, and then I'll do these pieces here, clean up, and then we'll, uh, we'll spray it and sand it and see what she looks like. Okay, so I got all the letter lettering done. The only thing, the last piece I've got is these four pieces here that i got to take out with my 90-degree V-groove, or uh, also known as my cleanup bit. I call them either one but same bit it's a v groove that we have uh, we have available on the website so here we go
Okay, so that is, uh, that's all the carving. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and brush this all real well. Take out uh, any little high spots in there like you guys have seen me do before. Um, take all those out and get it ready to spray. So the next, the next step is uh, you'll see me spraying it and uh, then sanding it off and we'll, uh, we'll see how this thing turns out. Stay tuned. Okay, so I've got it set up on my Lazy Susan that dad made a, a few videos ago. So I'm just going to set up and I'm going to spray the edge. Get that done. Then after that, I'm going to let it sit for a couple minutes. We'll turn the camera off and then turn it back on when I'm ready to spray the face. You guys can watch me do that. Now the one thing about this material is it is uh, ponderosa pine so I'm going to be really careful and not not spray it too heavy so now we'll just let that set for a couple minutes okay so um, I've sprayed the edge I got that done and it's pretty dry to the touch so I'm going to go ahead and stand it up and spray it this is the kind of uh, position I don't like to spray my carving like this with it laying flat I like it standing up so I can see now there's something that I didn't talk about before if you look at this right here it's a little knot with a piece gone out of it it's actually probably a sixteenth of an inch thirty second deep so that I'm gonna cover with my ink just to not get any it's already got some ink in it but I'm just gonna put a piece of tape over that for now and make sure I don't get any more ink in it. I should have puttied that up and had it surfaced before I even did any layout on the sign. I just, uh, I didn't see it. So, um, once we get this all sprayed and everything, take that off, uh, after the sanding is done, I'll probably putty that up and then uh, sand it off again. Try and match this, uh, this pine. I've got two or three different colors. All right, so here we're going to, now here, again, like I talked about, this is, this is pine, so I'm going to be really careful and not spray it too heavy. I didn't put any sanding sealer on this, uh, because honestly, I was uh, just, I just flat forgot. So, um, it just goes to show. I get excited about doing something special like this and sometimes I get ahead of myself and I just forgot you to... You use a sanding sealer sometimes just to prevent the ink from soaking into the board, is that it? Yeah, the uh, sanding sealer uh, mostly just to prevent the ink. Anytime I'm using pine, I use sanding sealer. Well, not anytime because obviously I forgot on this one. But if I had my druthers, I'd rather be spraying this and uh, and had sanding sealer on the board before I ever started my project. Hopefully, I can be careful enough with this ink that it won't bleed. Main thing is just to keep it light, yeah. light strokes, right? Very, very short, light strokes. If you look really, really close, you can see some some light areas. You want me to in zoom here. in on that? Side? No, that's all right, Dad. It doesn't that's not necessary. So I'm going to turn it upside down, and now I'm going to, I'm glad that didn't fall, I'm going to uh, hit it again just, just barely from the bottom side, being very careful not to puddle that ink up too much. And I'm just going to hope for the best that, uh, that it doesn't bleed on me too much. Generally speaking, I am much more critical of my signs on little imperfections than uh, than my customers are. So it, stuff that is a really stands out to me and and maybe to you too won't even show to our customers. But that doesn't stop me from trying to trying to make it as perfect as I can. All right, that's it. Back away. No more ink on that because I can get carried away to where everything in there is just jet black and it's just not necessary. So, and when you're dealing with this pine, you got to be really, really careful. All right, we're going to let that uh, 
let that dry and then we'll come back and sand it off see what she looks like okay we're ready to sand this thing off guys so and again this is uh kind of preaching to the choir most of you probably already know this this is a little skill sander that i use the the 7510 uh, 3 by 18 and I set up a, a double sander situ situation. So I've got a 40 grit on this one and this one is an 80 grit. So on the back of the sign I'll just sand with the grain with the uh, 40 grit and uh, all of these screw heads I try and make sure they're down below the surface so I don't hit them. But what, even if I do it's no big deal. <laughs> So you can see I don't uh, I don't have to be too careful on the back. Now I know this is the top of my sign, so I want to put my stamp on it. I generally put my stamp at the top, somewhere around the center. Now we'll flip it over, and we'll sand again using the 40 40 grit paper or belt. Excuse me. 40 grit belt, we'll, uh, we'll sand with the grain on the face. My objective with this this rough belt, the 40 grit, is just to get most of the ink off, not all of it, just maybe 80, 90 percent. Now the rest of it will come off with the with the 80 grit.
pretty fortunate. I don't see uh, really any bleeding in there. A few little high spots I got to hit with a black pen. You see that okay, Dad? Hopefully it doesn't slide right off and hit the floor. <laughs> that would be bad. Yeah, it shows up good, son. Yeah, and actually there's knot that I was talking about before. I don't know if you can get in there, Dad. Yeah, it, it doesn't it looks uh, good. it looks really good, doesn't Josh. look bad. I don't think I gotta putty that at all. Looks good. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna mess with it. So what I'm gonna do is take my Sharpie while uh while we're here. Let me grab it real quick. And uh well, if I can find it, that's not, yeah, yeah, this one, hopefully it's not too dried out. I wanted the little bit heavier one, the thicker one, but this one will do the job, I think. All those little tiny white spots. And those were just high spots that, I, that weren't down quite below the surface, so they were just barely at the surface so that when it, I sanded it and took a little bit more of the surface off, off, they came up white. A few more in there, I think. Hmm, I saw one somewhere else, but... Anyway, so, that's about it for that. Now I'm going to, uh, the next step is to uh, stain it. I'm going to go ahead and use my spray cedar stain on this and uh, put some clear on it. So that's what we'll do next. Are you going to show that on camera? Yeah, I'm going to do that on camera. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, a few videos ago, we sh I showed how on pine, a lot of times I, I will stain my signs after they're done. So this is what I use. Uh, it just kind of a, a refresher, I guess, on that last couple videos. I think it was two or three videos ago. It was in the early hundreds somewhere. So anyway, so what I'm going to do now, I pretty much already shook this up. Now again, this is a, this is a situation where I can't, this is a stain that I put on there, but I don't rub the stain at all because it will cause that ink to streak. So I just hit the one side. Now I'm going to turn it over and hit the front side. Make sure that you test it and it's got a really nice even spray on it, which this nozzle, this is pretty much a new can. So you can see I keep the, the can moving the whole time and I don't want to spray it too heavy. Just a nice light coat and that's it. That's, that's all you need. That's got a, there's a little bit of light. I'll hit that one more time. Right there it is. Perfect. That's just what I wanted. So now, let me swing that around. Now from that, I'm gonna let that dry probably overnight and then I'll put some coats of clear on it and we're done. You want me to stand that up, Dad? No. You can see it no, okay? No, leave it just like it is. Okay. They've already seen it. Now they're just looking at the, so the stain on it. That, uh, so it, that's it. You guys got to see it from start to finish. You guys got to see the image and how the carving came out. Now this particular sign, some of you may want to know what I actually charge for this. You know that in a normal situation, I charge anywhere from 50 to $60 a square foot. On this one, that, that rule didn't apply because of all of the detail and all of the work. I probably got, um, I probably got five, six hours in this with making the board and really the, the, the layout part probably was even more time consuming than the, the carving part of it. Um, but I probably got eh, maybe maybe five hours in it total, something like that. Um, and this particular sign I got 275 for plus shipping. Um, so it's a little bit more than, than my standard, but that's because my standard didn't apply. This is not a standard sign. This kind of detail, that kind of work, uh, necessitated that I, I charge more um, just because it was uh, you well, you saw how tricky it was to do so um, anyway that's if you're curious I got 275 for this and and uh, it was a fair price I could have charged more because 
because it was a lot of work and uh, and it was, and it was tricky. But um, anyway, I. But you learned something from it. That's yeah, the, and it'll be a great sign to take a picture of to add to my portfolio to show the kind of detail that can be done. So. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I really liked the way it came out. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, we'll get this posted up on the internet. You can take a look.